Hey guys, today we are going to look at another deck, and this deck is quite interesting. It is Jund. It's been a long time since we looked at a good Jund build. So, what is new in Jund? We have Hazaret, which is an interesting speculation. It sees modern play, and it's a very powerful card. I think it's going to go up in price eventually. Uh, you have the Fatal Pushes, of course. You have Kogan's Command, Abrupt Decay, Lightning Bolt, not too much. Interestingly enough, only two Lightning Bolts, Lightning Bolt being such a good card. Uh, Thought Seize, Inquisition, and Maelstrom Pulse. You have four Lily of the Veils and one Liliana, the Last Hope. Uh, Liliana, the Last Hope, as you have probably heard from my previous video, I do like her a lot. I think she is modern strong. And I do feel like she's interchangeable with Liliana of the Veil, just kind of like how Thought Seize and Inquisition is interchangeable. Land, pretty basic land. You got Damnation in the sideboard, Anger of the Gods, Collective Brutality, not too much going on here. You do have the now more expensive uh, maids, Fumurinator maids. So Liliana, Last Hope, is still trending down, which is exactly what I expected her to be. Aldric Moon reminds me of a set that, how can I say it? I don't think much of it was open uh, because you had you had uh, Invocations, then you had Expeditions, you had Expeditions, this set, and then Invocations. Now, Shadows over Innistrad was widely open. It was extremely popular because they're like, oh, great, Innistrad, but Aldric Moon was not. One of the reasons is uh, not only was the draft, I think you had to draft uh, Shadows with Eldritch Moon, but Eldritch Moon itself, one of its big baddies, Emiko, was banned. So after Emiko was banned, one of the worst feelings you can get is opening a Mythic that is a banned card. That's not normally something that you want to see ever. And I feel like a lot less product was open because of that. Uh, and the product, yeah, you could say, oh, well, by that time we had new sets and stuff, blah, blah, blah. We have A4 Work Marvel and all of this interesting things going on. Regardless, I do not believe much of this was opened. And I don't believe much of it was printed or as print as much. Battle for Zenkar, I would assume a ton of it was printed. Oath of the Gatewatch, I assume a ton of it was printed. Shadows over Innistrad, I assume a ton of it was printed. I don't think much of this was printed uh, because it was a second set and a very interesting block uh, scheme. And this this block is the only one without masterpieces, right? Then even Hour of Devastation had masterpieces. Then we had the Invocations, and we had the Inventions, and the X. So we had four sets, the last four sets minus Ixalan, had masterpieces. All right, Dark Confidant. I like it. I wasn't a big fan of it previously, but I think it does have room to go up if it's not reprinted for the billionth time, right? And I like the foil price in particular. Uh, the foil is from Modern Master. There's a very small difference. That percentage is such a small percentage on it. Lily of the Veil. Is it time to buy lilies? Yes. I feel like $85 unless he gets another reprint. So a lot of this is based on these cards not getting reprinted, which no one can predict. But yes, I think that some cards will are more likely to be reprinted than others. Like the Shocklands could be in 25th anniversary. I would not be absolutely surprised to see that. But after 2017, Lily of the Veil... $85 and the fact that she hasn't really dipped or gone up or down, it's stable. I like it. I like $85 lilies. I feel like she could hit over 100 again. And I actually like this lily better than the original lily because of that little sticker in the bottom. And I've been on record for saying I like to have cards with stickers on now. It makes trading easier. It makes you know playing easier. There's no like, oh, are you playing with a proxy? That awkward kind of uh, question. Even if yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, Magic is a player's game. I do hope that Lily becomes cheaper, and I believe she will eventually. But 85, you do need to have some chase cards. Now, this is an interesting speculation, especially in foil, and especially in her. I'm pretty sure it is a her. Uh, in her invocation foil. We know this sees modern play. We know it's very good. 
That's interesting. Very few cards in standard are strong enough to survive in modern, and this is one of them. Uh, this is absolutely one of them. It has a lot of, of legs. I feel like it can. The price point is very high because people already have identified exactly what I just told you. But I feel like it's unique. When I speculate on cards and buy like lots of cards, I like two things. I want A, I want it to be very unique. And B, I want it to be in, I mean, low supply, but this is not the case. This is not in low supply. There's many copies of it. But the invocation, that should be in relatively low su supply compared to everything else. So I think that's what you aim at. You aim, aim at the invocation. Very good in this deck, great deck tech. Uh, and then and last one, I always like to include uh, possibly cards that have that are cheaper to buy in. And I think Scavenging Ooze at one time when it was just in a commander deck before it was reprinted in a core set, it was a $40 card. It was that good. It is that good. It is seeing play. It's just been reprinted into Oblivion. Like, I don't know how else to say it, but It's not a bad card. It's not a $2.50 card. I mean, this card is legit. I, it's so strange to see it at $2. Like, I, I just can't imagine that as for this, the power level in this card. Part of it is due to reprints. Part of it is due to the whole, um, this type of card becoming less powerful mechanic. But should the meta shift again? Yeah, you can expect this card to go up a ton in price, uh, barring the reprint again. I mean, it just got reprinted, so we'll see. Anyway, that is it. Bye, guys.